Welcome to the Erasmus Foundation podcast. My name is Paul Nugent. Are you looking for answers to life and its meaning? Then this may well be the very podcast you need to listen to. In a series of podcasts, we are going to look at the difficult questions of life and apply spiritual knowledge to find out the answers. Hello. Today we're going to look at a subject, tests, challenges, and pain. Sounds like a bit of a dismal subject, really, but I think it's an important one. And with me to talk about this, Julia, Marie, and Mike. And so let's start with you, Julia, if you don't mind. Hi, Paul. Hi. Now, it is a painful subject and a challenging subject and perhaps a bit of a test for us all but it, it does sound a little bit dismal for a subject doesn't it what do you think about it well I think it could do if we're thinking of it from the earth but I thought just to start with I'd say that when we're at home and we are looking at a life uh, we are not looking at it in that way because we decided that we need to take a life to perhaps be challenged and tested in a certain area because at home we are trying to fully progress and evolve as a spirit and we have to be all, see all and do all. So there'll come a time when we think that perhaps a certain area we need to be tested a little bit more and to learn a little bit more about. So we choose a tapestry that will include those areas that we feel we are ready to be challenged with. So it's certainly not something we would look upon as something dismal. I think we'd be quite excited actually and we would have a certain idea of what we might face as a certain um, layout of the life that we'd have a certain understanding of. And also at home and I think it would be good if we felt this way when we're on the earth life is a balance so it's not going to be all smooth sailing and joyful and happy there there is going to be um, a time of testing perhaps a number of times where we'll be tested there'll be challenges if we like to look at it in that way and perhaps also periods when we are suffering great pain uh, maybe physical pain or this could be mental, emotional pain. And so all of these are going to be a part of our life to some degree or other. Now, the older the spirit, the more challenging the life, perhaps the more tests we might face. Certainly we will have more freedoms of choice, which are times of great testing and where we are in effect on our own to make a decision. So that will vary. But really, any life is challenging, no matter what age the spirit. So a young spirit will have certain tests that will challenge it to a degree. And so in some ways, all lives are equal in that regard, because there must be a challenge. We must feel like we've been stretched. And from those experiences, we will get a lot of positivity, I hope, perhaps within the life, I'm sure we do within the life, and certainly at home when we look back on it and see all the positives that have come through these testing times. But you do hear sometimes people who have been through very challenging testing times, and they look back and they think, well, you know, I'm quite glad I went through that because of what it's given me, it's made me stronger or it's made me understand myself or, or others or the world better. So I feel that the great mind designs our tapestries with tests, challenges and pain according to us as an individual in order to help develop us, to perhaps help us to become a little stronger spiritually and maybe to gain a little wisdom along the way. Thank you very much, Julia. Now, Marie, you're no stranger to pain, are you, my dear? It's something that plagues you quite often, and I've always had concern for you in this regard. So what do you think the purpose 
of pain is. Pain, I was told when I came to the foundation that pain doesn't last. So I've learned that. I came actually to the foundation right on time is when this condition of mine started in 2002 and not really knew what hit me, but stress, which I could not cope with. That was a challenge or a test. But at the time, because I was uh, at the, the nursery in Saturn, you know, in South London, and uh, the, the stress there was just terrible. It was really too much for my body, my head to cope with. And therefore, this sort of pain which had developed uh, this illness is, uh, is mainly due to this, to the stress. However, when I look around or when I hear some cases um, of some close friends, I'm thinking, gosh, mine is nothing. Mine really is nothing comparing to some others. And yet everybody deal with their ailment different way. I can cope with physical pain better than I can cope with emotional pain. I, I find it very, very difficult to deal with emotions and people people in pain. I mean, even animals in pain. I get very um, upset about that. However, from pain comes frustration. This is, is me. Uh, the frustration. I used to do that. Why can't I do it? Well, okay, one day I will. I'll try. But uh, there again, it, it's a test for me to accept and, as I say, think as well of uh, other people who do suffer from uh, much worse conditions than mine. The emotional, as I say, you know, I went through uh, a divorce which lasted three years. Uh, and I was running the nursery, bringing up children. Yeah, it was very, very difficult. And uh, of course, when I ceased uh, running the nursery and moved to Suffolk, which was a test because I didn't know if I was, where am I going? I'm going to the unknown, uh, coming to Suffolk. It all came all together. Um, I thought, we yeah, had take the move. Off you go and you'll see what happened. And, you know, I'm very happy that I've taken the chance. Thank you, Marie. That's, that's interesting. You've been very um, strong about it. And, and there's definitely a, a, a lot of acceptance in what you say by the sounds of it, which is perhaps the outcome of all that you've been through, maybe. Yes, I do have acceptance. I have developed that through the foundation. I think that's probably worth quite a lot spiritually so well done so thank you thank you Paul so Mike what would you like to say on the subject because life's not been straightforward for you either is it I don't think anyone has a has a, a life of, of just plain sailing straightforward everyone um, has obstacles within their life I tend to do the same as Marie says look at others and these, these, these people around me that that are struggling a lot more than me but when this subject for this podcast came up I, I wanted to talk on this because it reminded me of a gentleman that I worked for many many years ago he was a Sikh gentleman and at the time he was undergoing treatment for a brain tumour I was working at his house um, doing some conversions there to make it more accessible for him because due to the brain tumour he had limited mobility while I was there, I was working there for several weeks and he was, we just clicked somehow. He was a very honest, truthful guy um, and I got on with him so well. I was, I was working there on my own most of the time and whenever I was there, he would get a deck chair out and come and sit in the room where I was working and he'd say, oh, you don't, don't mind me you know, watching you and talking. He said, I enjoy the company. And while he was there, he, he opened up to me quite a lot. And he said to me, um, he was telling me about his life. At the time, he would have been probably about mid 40s. And he was married, but it was an arranged marriage. And he explained to me that his wife, um, he said, I, I love my wife, but as a, as a sister, 
not as a wife. He said, it's, it's not that sort of relationship. He said, but he went on to explain about arranged marriages and said, I never had a, had a say in it. Then he went on to tell me about the true love of his life and, and um, he wasn't allowed a relationship with this other lady and really how his life had panned out to where he was there at that, that time. He painted this, this picture of, of a, a very, very challenging life um, and he'd obviously been through a lot of tests and was suffering the pain and yet what I found remarkable and the, 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 I suppose how it, it resonated something with me was was how he kept so positive he had full acceptance of the situation he was in and I did hear the news that he had passed away and that was obviously his his tapish his time to return home um, but something from that that meeting for me just just sort of stuck with me and I've kind of always got that in the back of my mind somewhere that when I'm facing a difficulty or an obstacle in, in life, I kind of remember how this guy stayed so positive right, right throughout. Now, lots of things have already come out of this so far. One is acceptance, definitely, that... Um, Marie and Mike have both talked about that and how they feel that they have acceptance of their situation. And also with Mike, showing that how other people teach us. And I think it works the other way too. I suspect that your presence, Mike, taught that guy a lot as well. You know, the, the whole idea that we're not islands you know, is, is important. We all need to work together and and we all help each other along the line. And I think that's really quite beautiful. So thank you for that, Mike and, and Marie. And so, Julia, what would you like to say in, in, to add to this? Well, I think what both Marie and Mike have said is is very good. And I think very good examples of really the reason why we're here it's not just for our own progression it's for others as well and so much of our learning comes from our interaction with other people and I think you know we talk a lot here about getting to know ourselves and I think often the tests come when we do meet certain people who perhaps we find perhaps to start with a little difficult or there's something we don't too much like about them and then I think we have to think about truth because sometimes it is difficult, but we have to be truthful. And we sort of think, well, why is it I don't like that person? Is it perhaps because I'm a little bit like that myself? That could be one example. Obviously, we're not going to get on with everybody. Not everybody is going to like you. And we are very much likely to have enemies, as we might call them. So I think being on the earth, interacting with people is in itself quite testing. And, you know, sometimes it can be very, very challenging and perhaps a major part of your life where you are tested with certain people. And I think ultimately it is about finding the truth within yourself about your own reality. Um, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And quite often you will be helped to discover these from interacting with others in various ways. But at the end of the day, I think if we do find this truth and find a little bit more comfort within ourselves and a little bit more peace, then any testing situations we might come across, um, other people that might be challenging, we'll be able to deal with it better. Um, we'll be a little calmer, perhaps we'll be a little bit more patient and a little bit more generous. And at the same time, I'm sure we learn more about ourselves because I think we never stop learning. But I think if we can get that basic understanding of ourselves and hopefully discover really in a way what we're here for, you know, what is our purpose, what are our skills, what are we good at and what are the areas we need to be careful about and 
watch out for. And as you say, Paul, we're teaching at the same time. So all that I said about, you know, meeting people that might be challenging, um, we could be challenging for other people, especially when we're trying to sort ourselves out. Because I think for myself, when I came to the fellowship, as it was called then in the early days, I was fairly young and I didn't really know myself very well. I was in a bit of a, a muddle, really, but I was fascinated by what I was learning. But there was a very challenging period for 10, 15 years in particular, when I was sort of discovering things about myself that weren't always very easy to um, accept and I didn't always understand them straight away, but I hadn't quite got enough strength either, and perhaps not enough understanding at the time to um, work through those years. But gradually, I think if you do apply yourself, if you really believe that, you know, in what we've been taught by our tutors, that, you know, we all have strengths, we all have weaknesses, we all have a purpose, there are going to be testing times. We've spoken about freedoms of choice. And I think that understanding, if you really feel you want to get to that place that they talk about, a place of more peace, a place where you feel that you've found your purpose and you've got great joy and great happiness in, in doing something that you feel that is right for you, then I think that helps the endeavour. But as I say, for a period of time, it can be perhaps a little bit more testing until you found a little bit more um, strength. And then we're told that uh, sometimes when we've done perhaps a little well with our life, that might be then we might get another test. Uh, that's sometimes, I think, how it works. But um, regardless, I think um, it's a major part of our life, tests, challenges and pain. But the balance is that we also have periods of joy, of peace, of happiness, or well, most of us do anyway. I mean, obviously, there are lives that are quite short, that are taken for particular reasons. And usually it is to test and to give other people something to think about and work through in their own lives. Very good, Julia. Thank you very much. Now, Marie, we're always told by spirit that pain is refining. Do you think you're more refined after all this experience of yours? <laughs> I think I've got <laughs> a lot of work to do still. <laughs> but uh, it's a serious question, though. Do, do you think, yes, it do you think yes. it's helped you? Oh, oh, yes. As a challenge, actually, for me, uh, is to be stronger in my opinion of what what I really want to do instead of wanting pleasing people I don't I don't often do that now but however I came to the foundation with that weakness and, and I've been told you know I've been told that I was I, I was weak and I accepted it took me it took me a long time to accept it because I thought I dare you telling me that you know okay. but yeah, you know, because I've always been on my own and I never taken, um, I suppose, criticism. I take some criticism, but there's some criticism I can take. But anyway, no, I have, I have learned quite a lot. Yes, it does refine a person, I would say, has refined me a bit, but I've got a long way to go. Um, I think I've got more... Um, uh, I won't say sympathy is not the right word, but understanding and um, um, empathy. You, empathy, thank you, Paul. Empathy for people who do suffer much more than me. I like visualize people in the, in those uh, in their suffering. I think that's that's quite interesting. You say that, but also can be a burden on yourself, really, because in a way. You can't do much about some of it, can you? The the suffering in the world, and we see it on a day to day basis. It's everywhere, yeah. and and we can only do what we can do. And to take those pains upon yourself is a burden, I think. Uh, not not entirely, because um, I send thoughts, healing thoughts. I do quite. I, I do that quite often. 
um, you know, being a war somewhere, especially if I see the pictures. Um, but for example, I would take a lot, I, I would do a lot of uh, absent healing. Yes. You know, I would look somebody and I'm thinking, oh, that poor person, that poor child, you know, and I can, I can just see uh, that person or even that animal when it come to it. That's something I like to do. I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing, what you're saying. To, but all, I think all I was saying is, and I'm not really disagreeing with you, I'm just just chatting it yeah. through with you. It's just that if you took everyone's pain upon yourself, it would be a burden. You just can't do it. You've got your own pain to deal with. And it's great to mm. consider others, but not to really absorb everyone's pain because I think it's too much. That's just my view. Well, it's, it's the, yes, I understand what you say, Paul. You, you, you're right, but um, you know, it's just a, it's just a thought. It's just a healing thought. Yeah. You know, the lights going onto a, onto a country, onto people. Nothing wrong with yeah, that, that at all. That does, Nothing wrong with that, that at all. Doesn't, that, no. no, doesn't worry me at all. Doesn't take it. Doesn't take my energy at all. Okay. No, that's um, fine. I, I, I'm just, you know, that's fine, Marie. I was, yeah. I, I was just saying that some people take on the weight of the world, don't they? Yes. And I yes. think that's what I'm talking about. They, they take yes, on the world, yes. the weight of the world, and and you can't do that. It's it's not yes. yours to take on, actually. Is it? No, I've been there actually. Yes. I have been there. Yes. I, I used to do that and thinking, you know. But then again, that is something that I've learned at the foundation. Mm. Um, yeah, you can't do that, right? But as I say, uh, healing thought are, are really. Uh, but you're a very uh, caring uh, person, is what we're establishing quite clearly here tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. May May I say something at this point? Of course, please. Please, please Padina. Thank you. Yes. I, I don't wish to interrupt, but it I believe it is necessary to speak. I was listening to what you were just saying. And when I was within the earth and I had some healing ability, if I saw somebody in acute pain, I would do my very best to relieve them of that pain by using my mind to transfer the pain to myself. And sometimes I was successful with this. It would relieve the person and the healing I would give them would work, of course. It would cause me some discomfort for a short period of time. But knowing no pain lasts forever, it is of no consequence to me that I would endure a small pain for a short period of time, with the benefit and the knowledge that I was able to relieve the pain they were suffering. Mm. Please continue. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Padina. I think a lot of people would be surprised at what you said there Padina I think a lot of people wouldn't have mm. that strength to do what you did perhaps. no perhaps not but if a healer is strong and sincere with what they do it may be at times they might apply themselves in this way thank you very much thank you and Mike a really interesting uh, session today and you spoke of a person that had a huge influence on the way you think in a way didn't he mm -hmm. this and i wonder whether we all have had i mean i i can think of a person that i used to know with muscular dystrophy that as when i was back at school that was a huge person and with strength and how he dealt with what he did 
kind of put anything that I had to deal with is, is pretty small and it's really helped me all these years. So have you considered, Mike, whether you have the same effect on others? I, I suppose people, especially in a one-to-one, -one, will open up to me quite intimate problems and, you know, issues within their life. So maybe I've just maybe I've just got that that that, that, um, that, that I don't know kind face that, that someone feels comfortable to be able to talk to me and I, and I'm happy I'm happy if, if that helps someone in some way um, to I suppose unload a burden. I think there's a lot of people in life that 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 bottle stuff up um, and carry it around with them. Um, sometimes afraid to talk about these things and in fact I've had <laughs> now we're talking about this I've, I've got a um, you know a very good friend of mine who, who lost his daughter to suicide and he carried that with him for many many years um, and uh, he's worked worked within the building industry the same as myself and I suppose a lot of men, um, I suppose they put on a front, really. It's a bit too macho, isn't it, to, to, to let all your inner feelings out and talk about these things to others. Um, but, yes, I have had that many a time where, where people open up. And um, I, I won't say, I, I certainly don't give advice because I don't think it's my place to, to advise someone, to tell someone what to do, but I am there as a... As a uh, you know, as a, as a listening ear. Um, so and, and, and that in itself is is important, isn't it? Now that that's, strikes me, and I know you quite well, and I know that I think you you will listen to whatever someone says to you, and I believe you wouldn't judge what you hear. You would you would listen, and you do give advice at times when you're asked for it, and. It's usually worth listening to. So I, I think the important thing that's coming out of this is the fact that we are helped through life by some people and we help others by purely just being there sometimes, just just the fact that we are who we are. And that's perhaps probably what Dina will say, how important it is to be an individual for that purpose. Mm. So, so thank you, thank you very much, Mike. And uh, again, we're coming to the end of our podcast, a really interesting one. So, Padina, would you like to say something now, please? Um, just to add one thing. In spirit, before a spirit is ready to accept a life on earth, they are shown a tapestry and perhaps more than one which they would choose according to their appreciation of their level of development as a spirit and as a consequence they would be helped, advised, tutored to accept the tapestry that would be most appropriate for their involvement. Now, during this process, within a tapestry, there may be four or eight, anything between four and eight freedoms of choice within the life, which would have a great deal of spiritual purpose and meaning. And it is these which are particularly looked at in assessing the tapestry of that life to see whether or how appropriate it would be to choose that one. And of course, very often, those freedoms of choice 
will involve a test, a challenge, and in sometimes pain. And this is understood and accepted by spirit. In spirit, there is no pain. So it is only by coming to the earth, living a life, that one will experience pain to full measure according to the level of spiritual strength within that person, how much they can tolerate and accept. So it is very much understood in spirit that coming to the earth, pain is all part of physical life within the earth. And so are other forms of hurt as well. Knowing full well that in coming to the earth, one might hurt another or indeed be hurt, whether deliberate or not. And this is acceptable that this will happen. The Erasmus Foundation is a spiritual teaching and healing foundation based in Laxfield, Suffolk in the United Kingdom. We have a web page www.erasmus-foundation.org If you would like to be a guest on our podcast or indeed have further questions for us then please contact me on paul at erasmus-foundation.org and we'll do our best to accommodate you. Thank you very much for listening.